In this video, I'll give you a brief history of the last few years of SEO. This video is brought to you by EpiPies Academy. To give you a little context of what's happening, and I'll talk about what's working heading into 2021. So Google makes hundreds of changes annually, sometimes multiple changes a day. Most of those changes are minor, but there are a few major changes every year that are impactful that we should watch for. Those are called broad core updates. I'll reach back as far as March 2018. There was a broad core update and that change caused relevant sites sites that have relevant high quality content in a niche focused in a niche maybe they're not the biggest sites in the world but they have better content about something they ranked higher and authoritative sites that had you know bad content thin content those ranked lower in the past let's say you're a giant website like cnn or something like that you can put out any kind of a bad content but because you are cnn you would rank high for that content anyway but this change readjusted it in favor of the small guy, right? Small sites that actually put care into their content and had deep authority in some topic ranked higher. So niche focus mattered and it helped smaller sites get ahead. And sites that fell, low, high authority, low quality. Then in August 2019, Google reset things and they often do this. They make a change, then they recalibrate. So high authority sites jumped back up. Very likely what happened is that they saw, okay, high authority sites dropped too far because at the end of the day, even though high authority sites, sometimes they don't put out the best content, consumers want them because consumers trust them, even though they are not the best. So Google readjusted the previous update to make sure that those authoritative sites don't get hit as much. But quality and niche sites were still doing well. In September 2019, there was another big update called the Maverick update. It has a fancy name, but it didn't do that much. It just further readjusted a lot of Google's previous changes. So there wasn't that much, even though it's kind of a historic update because it has a specific name because it coincided with the, I guess, the release of Top Gun remake or whatever, the movie. So somebody named it the Maverick update. And so it, ha it kind of has a historical context, but there was not much change. But moving forward, Google also has been working on updates to their NLP, natural language processing. That's just basically a fancy word for how they interpret your search. So like if you say sneakers, do you also mean shoes or do you also mean like high top sneakers or do you mean like sneakers for basketball or sneakers for running? Like all these complicated language understanding because a human understands language a little different or a lot different than a computer. And Google's job is just to understand what does the search mean and match the right results with the right queries. For Google, it's a big deal. For the, for the average SEO practitioner, it's actually not a big deal. There's not a tremendous amount we can do about it unless we get into super, super complicated things. So what's important moving forward? What to do in 2020, 2021? Let's talk about the big trends. First of all, there's no more half effort, skip the hard work strategies, outsource everything. There's no more like hiring low quality freelancers to write about some topic that's been written about online 300,000 times, all mediocre. Write the best article on the topic. Otherwise, there's no point in writing because there's already 10,000 articles that are similar, copy pasted or basically regurgitated. So now quality and insight and deep expertise really matters more than ever. People will trust that when they read it, but also Google understands more and more which site is more authoritative and more, which site is more knowledgeable. So there's no more like, I'll put up a cheap site and I'll post a bunch of affiliate products on it and it's gonna rank. There's no more of that kind of stuff. There's no more buying bad links. There's no more thin content, none of that stuff. Instead, be a business that others discuss, a noteworthy business, an interesting business. You don't have to be discussed all the time, but when there's activity outside of your accounts, right? Because if you own your social media accounts, of course you're gonna talk about your business, but if there's any activity around the mentions of your brands, people posting on social media, 
people linking to you. This, this is called backlinks all around your brand, your site, sometimes even brand mentions, not even links matter. But as long as you're a business people talk about, obviously you would do something of value, produce something great, great content, like a be a real business, right? There's no more like, let's trick Google. Now there's like, if you want SEO, be a good business. That's the most fundamental change. Now, after that, site speed is very impactful for SEO. Make sure your site is secure and it's fast. And then there's this Google Eat. It's an acronym. And basically it stands for build expertise, be a trustworthy business, build authority. So you see these previous two core algorithm updates, Google was essentially trying to calibrate the right balance of making sure that sites with the best expertise rank higher, that niche expertise we just discussed, and at the same time, authoritative known brands also rank higher. And by the way, if you keep on writing expert level content, great content that customers read, even though you may not be CNN, you may not be a household name, you will be in the process of becoming one. And as you remain in the process of becoming one, you'll become more and more authoritative too. So you'll be gaining that expertise and authority and gaining those things will help all the pages on your site rank. That's the approach moving forward. Also, another huge trend is Google Voice. This is basically when people talk into their phone like, hey Google, where's the coolest nearest restaurant? Or hey Google, buy some product on Amazon. Or hey Google, play me a song on Alexa or whatever. But people just talk it into, into their device instead of typing that Google Voice. Those are the major trends. So that's what we should focus on moving forward now that you have historical perspective, because having that historical perspective helps us understand Google's trajectory and where they're headed so we can be one step ahead or at least not behind.